So we're back at again with a fun and fresh graveyard deck to dominate anyone that you play against in challenges. When you have Tombstone on defense, unlike the previous variation that had Goblin Cage, you're going to get so many souls collected because as each skeleton dies, it gives your Skeleton King new life. So when you drop your ability, you're going to have a lot of skeletons on top of your opponent's tower. When you have skeletons spawning from your Tombstone, the Witch, the Skeleton King, Skeleton Army, and Graveyard, there's going to be skeletons everywhere on the map. It's probably one of the most fun things that I've ever played, so let's go jump straight into some games and assert dominance. I upload daily videos on the channel, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss out. And a huge thanks to everyone that's using Creative Code Surtag, making this channel possible. All right, we are ready to spawn as many skeletons as we can. This deck is crazy quick at spawning skellies. If you want one thing from this deck, you're going to get a ton of presents. It's the Santa Claus that you guys never wanted to see. Well, at least your opponents didn't want to see, right? Oh, man. We're getting the Santa Claus from the Witch, the Graveyard, and the Tombstone, and then also the Army all at once. No matter what, we're going to get the Army, sir. Also, if you want to start spamming the Leap Barbarians, I don't think that that's, that's scary, right? The Skeletons are going to do a ton of damage on the right-hand side. The Leap Barbarians are already overwhelmed. It's like they've been procrastinating a school assignment, and then the due date is there, and they're just like, wait, I can't finish this in time. And the Skeletons just, just overwhelmed them. Shut them down, snack and a half, and look at the tower falling fast. So my opponent overcommitted once with a Fireball and a Leap Barbarians. Leap Barbarians were worthless. They died to the Skeletons and the Witch because the Witch just gives us free stuff. I think the game's completely over. The guy messed up once. Once was bad enough, but twice didn't. <laughs> There's no way of stopping an Inferno Dragon on your three crown. He totally thought he was safe because most of the time you can ignore stuff on your three crown, make a huge counter push, but not against this deck. We put you out of your misery fast. All right, we got another one. What's going on, my dude? So first things first, we're going to sauce out of good luck and we're going to figure out what your deck is. I don't really like playing super aggressive with this deck. Usually you want your opponent to make the first play, so then you can destroy it with the Skeleton King and then immediately overwhelm them with skeletons spawned from every angle. You see a side of your tower, there's probably going to be a skeleton there in the future. I don't know, man. Just a prediction. That's kind of how this deck works. Oh, please. Go in for, like, a P.E.K.K.A. on top of this so I can melt it with your... Oh, that's unfortunate. I was going to say, if you went for a P.E.K.K.A. after already spending Elixir, it wouldn't have enough Elixir for the Electro Wizard. And if you did, then I could still freeze and be okay. Um, I wonder if I Tombstone here. I think Tombstoning is not a bad decision, especially if I get arrows on top of this. And we will be able to kill the Archer Queen without that much damage on my tower. So, pretty good start to the game. Could have been better? Yeah, definitely. But it's one of those things when you're playing against a pretty annoying deck with Archer Queen, you got to make sure that you don't overcommit early on and you don't slip up too quick. So as soon as you slip up, you're going to lose the tower. That's how destructive champions are in this meta right now. A lot of pro players are complaining about them because they're so stupidly strong. I might be able to freeze, but I think that would also be a slight overcommitment. So I'm going to go for a witch instead. We're going to start spawning those skeletons. We're going to get that defense locked down. And sir, you're going to go in for a fireball up in here. No, 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 no. Not today. You can't touch the big witch today. All of her skeletons are giving her their lives for her. Oh my gosh. Come on. How did the Archer Queen break through every individual skeleton? They were nobly and gracefully given their lives for the witch, and it was all in an utter amount of dismay. That's crazy, man. Their sacrifice was completely in vain. I think he's going to Electro Wizard. Oh, maybe he doesn't have Electro Wizard in the deck. I could have I could have frozen there, guys. We could have done our Disney movie. We could have had Frozen Part 5. <laughs> that would have been awesome. It is what it is. You squander those opportunities, and you're like, wow, I could have done better. But at the exact same moment, whenever you do that, it, it's hard to know, right? It's really hard to know in the moment when you're thinking... It, it's like easy to look back and have hindsight of 2020 and just be like, yeah, it's super easy to know that I should have done that. But in reality, in the moment, those decisions aren't easy to make. So I'm going to, I don't know if this is smart. I think it was pretty good, all things considered. If I dropped it earlier, oh, he did have Electro Wizard. That would have been a horrific experience. I, usually they don't have Electro Wizard when they also have Archer Queen, but this is one of those guys that's got it. I think it's better to run Electro Spirit so that you have a faster cycle, or maybe then, uh, maybe, maybe even like a Magic Archer as well, or Mother Witch was usually what people ran, but I guess after Mother Witch got nerfed, then you're going to be running more Electro Wizard. So I guess it makes more sense now. I'm just, you know, thinking things through as I play. That's how we always do out here, guys. Let you guys know the unfiltered thought process that I have in Clash Royale. So I'm going to arrow that away so we can kill the bandit. I think that nothing's going to be body blocking the skeletons then. Let's go! You cheeky... With six seconds remaining, we are going to hold the door. It doesn't matter if you've got Zap and Archer Queen. Our deck's defenses are rock solid against any bridge spam. 
And that's why I love this deck so much. Even if you play against some of the best Bridge Bam decks with Archer Queen, you just X them out and they don't break through. On to the next one against Maddie. What is going on, my dude? So first things first, we're just going to drop a good luck. We're going to be a Shrivo Sir. Give me the value. Okay, so I, I didn't get good luck. We're playing against Log Bait. If I arrow away the princess, then we can get absurd value with all of our bait cards. But usually they're going to have Valkyrie or Knight. And if they've got Valkyrie, it's going to be a huge scary fright. Because it's not going to be delightful for our skeletons to go right head first into the little Valkyrie spinning her Axe of Justice. He just does splash damage and finishes us off way too fast. Only good answer to the princess is going to be arrows. So I would purposely try to save my skeleton army for the goblin barrel. You drop it in the back at this time and you take no damage from the goblins. And then I guess if they don't really cycle anything with the princess, you're able to get an inferno dragon locked onto it. So I'll take that trade. You didn't protect the princess of the river. That's really solid. The Valkyrie is going to come down, but I wonder if we can go for the freeze. This is extremely ambitious. I'm not going to do it. I could have gotten some damage, but then I would have had nothing for the Valkyrie on the other side. So you always have to pick your battles. Do I want to just risk it for the Biscuit and then take a ton of damage on the other side? Probably not, right? Like, it's not worth losing my entire tower when we're running a control deck. And if I give up any portion of damage, she's just able to rocket cycle me for the rest of the game. So I'm not going to do that. Usually you want to dictate the flow of the game with your deck instead of, you know, making it an uncontrolled game where you're both getting a lot of damage quickly. Usually in the last couple seconds, you can go for Graveyard Freeze and then not care about your tower because you know that you can conveniently get like anywhere from 500 to 700 damage for free. But you can't do Reckless Abandonment early on in the game. It's just not that type of deck. How about that? So I could Skeleton Army here. I think that's probably going to be the best place so the Valkyrie doesn't lock on. I know that the Skeletons are going to get destroyed, but I need that Valkyrie to die quickly because it was tanking and I did not have arrows in cycle. So really well played for our opponent, as you guys know. Just, he was able to outpace my arrows and then get back to a Goblin Barrel before I was back to the arrows. That cost a lot of damage for me, and it was extremely unfortunate. But it is what it is. Maybe he princesses at the river, so I'm going to go in for the uh, Tombstone and predict that. I did make a pretty good prediction there. All the Skeletons are going to die, and that's going to give us more value for the Skeleton King. Maybe we're able to go in for a Graveyard on the left-hand side. Really good prediction with the uh, Witch as well. I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're trying our hardest out here. I'm going to Arrows as well on top of the Goblins. Maybe I can Freeze. If I can Freeze and keep the Witch alive, that's what our play is. Dude, he got back to another Valkyrie. This guy is playing really, really, really well. This is probably the best player I've played against all day so far. That's insane. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to go for another Skeleton Army. I don't know if I got down in time. I think I did barely. Awesome stuff. All right, I'm going to Inferno Dragon to finish off the rest of the Princess. If I had a Skeleton King down, that would have been awesome, but I can't. I can't afford to. Guess I'm going to go for another Tombstone. Arrows here. He will be able to outpace the next uh, arrow cycle, so I need to get back to another skeleton army. The the tombstone is not going to stay alive much longer. Guy's just playing super, super well. I'm going to witch. I will kill the princess this time. But this is also five elixir investment for that. But I don't think it's that good. He should log it too. Or he could log it. At least the princess is out of cycle, so I don't want to go in for a skeleton king in the back because he could rocket that. Uh, I'll skeleton army here. I don't know if he's going to log. He should log this every time he can. I guess I can Inferno Dragon on top. And then I can go in for a graveyard on the right-hand side. And then potentially arrow on both of the princesses if possible. I am able to hit both princesses. So that's worth it. But am I able to stop the rest of the stuff? I mean, the log's coming through. If the Inferno Dragon locks onto the tower, he has to Electric Spirit. And then I think we can freeze. Dude, I overcommitted. No! If you guys saw that, I tried to freeze, but he went back for another Tesla. He knew I was going to freeze. This guy is extremely talented for that play. I got to give you credit. A lesser player would have let the Inferno Dragon locking on after the Electric Spirit and just been like, okay, I've done all I can. But he knew I was going to freeze and he made that prediction. Just like, you know, all of his safe plays earlier, he totally deserved this game. So if you do play against a Log Bay player that does outpace and outcycle your arrows and they get a lot of damage earlier on, they just can win the game with Rocket Cycle if they played that well. It is a tougher matchup, but you're probably not going to be playing against a log bait player that's this good. Hey, we got a game against the Outsider. Dude, we're going to bring you in. We're going to give you milk and cookies, and we're going to destroy your dreams. Okay, maybe you don't deserve the milk and cookies anymore. Oh, I missed one of the goblins. He dropped the card so fast that I wasn't ready to respond. So then I dropped my cards incorrectly, and I gave him free damage. That is unfortunate in the, every sense of the word. Okay, so he's going to have Valkyrie log bait. I think that log bait, as you saw earlier, we lost against it. I mean, it's one of the harder decks to play against for sure if they play this perfectly. So we'll see if we can get some redemption up here. Let's get it. I'm going to scout the army on top of the prince. We're going to be able to discourage him from getting too much value. Oh, what the heck is this weird log bait deck? 
Why do you have Log with Prince and Night Witch too? All right, you know what? This is looking a lot more promising for me because I can use the ability, then I can freeze, and then I can also even go for arrows if I really need to. Oh my goodness, look at the skeletons! That was stupidly successful, and I enjoyed every second of it. You know what? I'm feeling so good that I want to go for another graveyard. If we can keep the endless swarm of skeletons to three crown, that would be unprecedented in Clash Royale. I've never seen anything like that. I've literally never seen a push like that in my life. Are you kidding me? That was so much fun. And we got redemption against the log bait deck that we lost against last time. If we lose against log bait, we gotta bounce back, and that was beautiful. All right, let's get into this game against Apollo. What's happening, dude? Hopefully we can clap and smack those towers silly. We've got so many spooky skeletons. Oh, dude, come on. Forcing out the witch at the river? You savage. You were relentless with the aggression already with the skeletons coming at you. You're going to go in for the princess at the river? You're pretty crazy. All right, so at least the mini pack is going to die to a skeleton army at the river here. I don't know if this is the adventurous play that I want to do because there's a chance he's got Mother Witch or a really good counter to it. Yeah, there it is, a Valkyrie. So the thing is, if you've got an awkward hand and you've got Graveyard Freeze, you can still Graveyard because if you don't have a tank, you just freeze whatever cards are coming at you and you're like, hey, look at how much damage my skeletons can do. But this is not something that's possible if you were running any other Graveyard deck. So let's just pretend for a second that I had Fireball or I had Poison. Those type of graveyards are utterly impossible. I'm going to take a ton of damage from the Ram Rider, but we're still up in this transaction overall, right? So we're having a good time on the right and the left. We're winning on both sides, no matter where you look. You look left, you look right, and your tower is going to be lower no matter the site. Maybe we can go in for a Skeleton King in the back and build up a big push, or we can go for Witch first. I think we go for Witch so then we spawn more Skeletons, and then the Skeleton King gets more souls. He's green, man. You would think that he's not good for the planet, but he recycles. He's a true sir. <laughs> he's making good use of those Skeletons. So, in this particular situation, the Witch getting the splash damage gives you so much value. The fireball coming down means that he's going to be at a limited amount of elixir. I think he goes in for spear goblins and the spear goblins die to one tap from the witch. Oh, let's go. We don't have to wait that much longer for Halloween because this man got spooked. That's what we like to see. So when you take a tower and you've got a burn dragon freeze with tombstone, it's utterly impossible for Ram Rider decks, Rage Fam decks. A lot of people are running Ram Rider because of the buff. They're just not going to be able to get that damage. Like they can get one connection, but like, now I know that you're going to go in for a zap or you're going to play that aggressive and I just hit you up with a freeze and you're not going to be able to win. One eternity later. Also, my tower is 911 and I, I don't feel like I need to call help, but maybe it's trying to send me a message. I'm pretty sure that was the dumbest river battle that I've ever had in Clash Royale. A Tesla at the river into an Inferno Dragon and Witch what is, what is my life? Like, what is happening right now? But in the end, we won. So it doesn't matter. Let's bounce on the next one. Hey, the guy's going to go for a hog rider. So unfortunately, we are not in with the tombstone. So if I had the tombstone at the start of the game, we shut that down easily. Literally zero damage on my tower. But at this point in time, we took way more than I anticipated. If I skeleton army in the right and we bait out a big spell, then I can go for a graveyard and I can maybe even go for a freeze. Please just kill the skeleton, bro. Just kill the skeleton. That's a good boy. That's what I'm talking about. Now the skeletons start to swarm the tower. He's going to spend all of his elixir on that. I wonder if we're able to go in for the skeleton king ability. It doesn't matter. We're going to take the tower anyway. He's going to spend all of his elixir on that. <laughs> Why would I spend elixir on the skeleton king ability? <laughs> if his tower got shredded in seconds. That's what I'm talking about, baby. And then we're able to easily follow up with arrows here. Oh, no. That executioner. It hit my tower because of that. Are you kidding me? The Executioner, with his last dying breath, decided to meme me and do so much damage to the tombstone there. If that axe didn't kill the skeletons, easy shut down to the hog rider, no damage. But wasn't quick enough with my arrow, guys. I guess, you know, Valentine's Day didn't come quick enough and Cupid wasn't able to arrow him down. So it is what it is. This game's going to be a lot more close than it should be, but I still think I'll be able to win it. 2,000 years later. <laughs> with the inferno dragon in the last second freeze that's too clean that's too easy let's go guys though it was a dominant victory at the end it just took a little bit longer because we got so much damage with that really annoying executioner at the start if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like subscribe for more content and i hope you have an amazing rest of your day